What's up guys? This is Škodlivac for Poker Strategy bringing you my first PLO50 video for PokerStrategy.com uh, Previously my videos were uh, from MicroStrakes, PLO10 and PLO25 um, Today I'm gonna make my first PLO50 video just to show you guys um, a bit how PLO50 zoom looks like these days at stars uh, a few words before I begin. I would just like to say um, to note some of the differences between lower stakes PLO and PLO 50. Uh, the main difference I'm assuming we are going to see in this video is that the games are a bit more aggressive. Um, there are first glimpses of solid drags at these stakes and probably there is a smaller amount of fish floating uh, in the pond. However, I believe PLO 50 uh, is still quite easily beatable and I'm gonna tr try to show you guys um, how I would play at these stakes and try to win some money. Um, I won't really focus about the basic stuff as I was focusing uh, when making PLO 10 and 25 videos so I won't talk why I'm folding a certain hand preflop if it's not close or something like that. Uh, but I'm more, more gonna focus on other more advanced stuff. So yeah, I mean, let's see how the tables look and see some action. Um, my heart goes as follows. The first line is VPIP, PFR, free bet, fold to free bet. Um, of course, the number by the name is the number of hands. Uh, second line is flop, turn, reverse bet, fold, flop, fold, turn, fold, reverse bet. Uh, third line is flop and turn c-bet in a free bet pot, flop fold, turn fold to a c-bet in free bet pot, and the violet number is steal percentage. And in the last line we have uh, dong bet, fold to dong bet, flop race, when to showdown, and aggression factor. Okay, so hopefully we will hit some interesting spots in this video. Uh, 9, 7, 5, 6. Uh, I might open this hand on some tables, but in general I think from medium position uh, fold is to be preferred. Uh, we have aces on table 2, but everyone folds, so not much happens here. Um, about my color code a bit, um, as you can see here, I have, uh, a, sorry, I have quite a deep labeling system but um, the important thing for you guys to know at the moment is that green means someone's a fish, um, yellow means they are a huge fish, nits are usually um, orange or some shade of orange, and rags are blue and the loose rags are red. Um, just to give you a bit of an idea what the colors look like. So I don't know how many people I have people I have marked at these stakes. Um, I wasn't playing Zoom when I was at PLO 50, but hopefully um, we'll be able to have some reads already. If not, we're gonna make some of them as we go along. Um, hopefully, by playing two tables, we'll get enough of action. Uh, I was thinking about doing three or even four tables, but then I think um, there were just too many things will happen and we wouldn't be able to focus on all of them but it's definitely a possibility uh, in the future if you guys would prefer a four tabling session on zoom or something like that uh, table two aces in the big blind in the small blind versus a button range quite decent aces so i think um the race was totally standard as you'll see my opening sizing varies according to position I'm opening 2.5x from the button, uh, 3x from the cutoff, and I'm potting from medium position and under the gun. So, um, of course, if there's like a fish somewhere, I don't mind um, betting bigger preflop to get more value. Um, very easy fold on table 2. Some people uh, enjoy calling here, but our hand just plays terribly in a free weight, free bet pot, so I think folding is by far the best option here. Um, I'm just holding these weak hands on the small blind. I'm not gonna even try to open them. 
I'm just setting myself up for trouble if I do that, so you just need to play a bit more patiently. Um, an unknown fish limps 70 VPIP. Um, we miss the board. I'm not gonna try and make a move here, even though the fish probably doesn't have anything here. I will just fold and not complicate my life when out of position. Um, we can again mark this guy as a fish, 83 VPIP. We have a Jax with a suited king. I think it's fine to limp in the small blind, which is what I'm gonna do. Um, we can flop, I mean, a small detail that helps our hand is that the Jack isn't suited, so we can potentially flop a flash draw along with the set for a monster. Uh, obviously we can call here as well. Um, table 2. I think a suited ace is a standard open from the cutoff, unless the button would be really loose. Uh, interesting flop. Um, I'm gonna bet half a pot. I don't need to bet more. Um, some players will attack this board as a bluff. Um, so if he does that, I would just call his raise. Uh, Re-raising would just you know, I saw myself versus a split and slightly better hands, so just calling the race would be the preferred play there. Fall on table one. Not going anywhere with this hand. Um, under the gun opens, I don't know much about him. Um, definitely not enough not to consider free betting with this hand, so I'm just going ahead and free betting. We get a call for bet from a rack, which is interesting. The fish calls as well. Um, interesting flop. We flop top and bottom, freeway. Uh, the board is just to draw you for us to do anything else but get the money in, so I'm just gonna pot it here. Even four way, the SPR is low enough for us to get the money in. The only hand I really worry about is ace 10. Um, no one has it, but they both have a flash draw, and unfortunately we lose the pot. Still, the SPR was so low that there was nothing else we could have done there. Um, we had 25% on the flop, which isn't the worst, but like I said, um, Nothing we could have done here, um, apart from getting the money in, you know. Unfortunately, we hit someone who had us free rolled, but what can you do? Um, Kings table one, easy open, pocket five, so just gonna be a fold. Still, um, you know, the pre-flop call from the button was just terrible in this spot, like. Really, um, not worth mentioning. So, if I see him again, he is definitely getting a fish mark. Fold table two, folding on both tables, obviously, because we have crappy hands. Um, I would steal on table two, probably. Uh, the blinds look really bad and nitty, so. No reason not to do it. Two possibly playable hands. Um, table one. I think my hand is just too weak to do anything here. Some people enjoy calling here, but I'm just folding this hand multi-way. Um, on table two, sorry. Table one, I am priced in for a call. While my hand is bad, it has quite a lot of nutty potential. Uh, I'm gonna semi-bluff this turn. No one bet the flop. And I'm gonna bet fold the river. I only get ring raised here by full houses, but I might get a call from trips, even though they are unlikely, or more importantly, weaker flushes. Um, table 2. I'm gonna call if the button comes along basically to set mine with uh, two backup flash draws. 
But when the button falls, I'm just gonna fold this hand out of position. Mm, decent hand on table one, but when someone opens, I'm not gonna play it. It just does not play good enough in big pots. I mean, not even in small ones. It plays well enough when you are uh, the razor on the button, but that's pretty much it. Um, you know, I think I can mark this guy as a fish. I mean, he doesn't have a lot of big blinds. Um, a flop where versus the fish is a snap stack off um, versus this guy is probably a fall to a race. Um, even though he usually has a draw there, our hand just doesn't have good enough visibility to play. And I mean, we did make a C bet into two people, so we should have at least a decent hand there. Um, table two, he mean opens. We're on the small blind. You could fold this hand, but I think calling is fine. Um, the four that the dangler really sucks here, but I think we can open it. Um, I'm gonna raise this guy here. Um, he just doesn't, his line doesn't look strong. Like a small raise pre flop, a small raise here. He might call the, f the flop raise, but he will fold the turn most of the time. But usually people just fold flop when they take such a weak line. Which is what happens. Um, table one, we hit an okay flop, obviously. We hit the nuts. Uh, I make a standard C bet, have a pot. Um, turn comes the queen. Obviously, I continue barreling. Um, <coughs> easy open on table two on the cutoff. Uh, Villain folds, so he floats once on a mono board uh, and folds on the second street. This is something a lot of people tend to do, uh, and it could be marked as a note. Uh, a rag opens for the cutoff. Um, I have a suited ace with a backup flash draw. I think it's fine to free bet him here. Uh, he quickly folds. And we are happy with the result. Obviously we could just call there, but I like um, applying pressure on Rex when I'm in position. Mm, it's a very profitable spot. Similar scenario now again on table one. Uh, now we don't have a nutty draw, but uh, we have free broadways and we can definitely make a bet. Uh, we flop the nuts. Um, I'm not gonna make it too big. Nine and a half looks good. Um, table two, flop, top set. Uh, villain calls. I think he's the type of player that will call the turn as well. He should know that I am usually barreling the free. Uh, he does call the turn. I think his range here is mostly over pairs, so I'm gonna make a sizing to get the call from an over pair. Hopefully he does call and he thinks I could have a busted draw. It's what happens and we pick up the pot. Uh, table 1 I think it's standard call with a suited ace and jacks. I think he had kings or aces in this spot, um, if we take a look at the hand, which doesn't want to open for some reason. Yeah, he has aces with the nut flash draw here. I'm surprised he didn't raise um, the flop, but some people just play this type of hands passively, I guess. Um, table 2, I, make, I complete this hand out of position. And here we have a lot of options on how to react. Uh, we have the nut flash draw, top pair, and a gut shot. So I'm just gonna lead here. Um, I'm not planning on folding this hand most of the time. I want weaker flash draws to call me though. That's the point with the lead here, even though it's into so many players. I could lead smaller, I think. But I think this sizing works well as well. 
Um, I could go for a check call, maybe even a check race, but um, it's good to have a decent donk range, I think. Um, folding on table 2 and on table 1. Um, two playable hands on both tables. Um, the guy is short on table one, so I'm just gonna call. If not, I would. I'm gonna take a stab on table one. Uh, I think it's the best move. Uh, when they both check, they usually don't have anything here. Table 2 is a standard bet. Uh, player on table 1 check calls, which is very interesting. Uh, I'm gonna check. And I'm, I'm gonna call if he bets the river. I just don't see a need having a strong hand here. Uh, table 2, I'm, I'm gonna make a small bet. Um, I'm betting half a pot for value on table 1. Um, table 2, he falls on the turn, which is fine. You know, I could check behind, but it would be kind of exploitable because um, he would know if he's a decent player that I actually flopped something and that I have a medium strength hand on the turn if he assumes I'm barreling there uh, with most of my range, so I think it's fine to um, <clears throat> basically do the same thing with your entire range there. Uh, more often than not, I will miss when that turn hits, so I think it's fine to play it like I did. Um, I'm actually gonna free bet table 2. A very loose free bet, but it's blind versus blind, we are deep. And our opponent will have to think twice about how he's gonna play with us. Um, I think it's a standard bet fold on this flop versus an unknown. He will fear aces more often than not. Uh, table 1, we have an easy value bet. If we get raised here, um, given the fact that we are a bit deeper, I would fold uh, 100 big blinds deep and getting the money in, but. Um, like 120 or what we had, I think, folding is to be preferred. Uh, fold on table 1. Easy open table 2. <coughs> Standard bet fold on this flop. Um, if villain donks, I'm gonna raise him here to define his range because I don't have enough good turn cards. Uh, he checks and I'm just gonna see bet. Um, easy open table 1 with my kings. Um, interesting flop. Definitely a value bet on my part. Uh, I am a bit too deep to call off a race. Uh, even by the button. But the bet is definitely fine here. Even though it's a bad fault. Mm, button calls. Both players call. Mm. Turn is a very interesting card. I'm gonna fire it. Um, I'm gonna fold if I get raised, obviously. But um, I really don't think anyone ever raises here anything but the hand that has me destroyed. So... Um, basically, I'm betting here to fold out strong flash draws uh, and stuff like that. Um, Button played this hand interestingly, to say the least. Um, table 2, I'm gonna make a call. He probably has a boat here. Um, I don't think I can check call here ever, even though I would get insanely good odds, but his turn call uh, just screams he has the nuts. Um, it's a very tough spot actually. I really don't need to be good that often. And I mean, I have no reads on him.
Yeah, I think it's a very tough spot. Um, table 2 is just a fault. I mean, he could have a busted flash draw, so... I mean, yeah. If he had more behind, I would fold, but with this much I have to call. And he, he flopped a total monster with top set and the nut flash draw and didn't raise it pre-flop, which is weird. But yeah, his line look, definitely looked really strong. But the price I was getting was just too good. <laughs> I couldn't fold. Um, table 2, I free bet a loose player with a double suited hand. Um, small blind gems, and we have an easy call here. Um, we flop okay, one would say. Um, I'm gonna bet small, hoping to induce like a bluff raise or something. Uh, it doesn't happen. Villain has aces, but we scoop up the pot. Not much to say about that hand. We make we made a free bet. We definitely got the price pre-flop, and we flopped okay. If by okay, of course, I mean we flopped the nuts with a redraw, but you know, fortune favors the balls. The ball, they say. Um, yeah, folding table one. So yeah, like, like I mentioned about that hand on table one, um, his line looked super strong when he just called the turn. Um, but I just couldn't fault for giving by g getting that price. Uh, I make a free bet with kings versus a short stack. Uh, on this flop, it's a very easy bet stack off. Uh, I just bought it. Um, I'm happy if he folds a 7 here, which he doesn't. Um, we scoop up the pot, obviously. Very nice result for us. Uh, it was a flip on the flop, I would assume. Yeah, let me just show it to you guys. Um, on the flop, we had 52%. Um, not much to add here, I think. A very standard play. Mm, it's something a lot of people don't do. Race with kings there versus short stackers, but uh, it's really a great way to play it. Um, table 2, villain pots this board. We flop a monster wrap and a 9. Uh, I'm gonna call the flop here. And obviously I'm giving up on the turn. He pots the turn again. Um, no matter what he has, this just warrants me marking him as a fish. Um, I made the call there because he's short enough that I, f I can go broke if I hit straight there. Uh, I'm not so, so worried about reverse implied odds there. Uh, he's just not deep enough for me to worry about that. <clears throat> Probably gonna play table one. I'm just gonna call. I, the big pair isn't strong enough to free bet. We flop a mediocre flop. Um, both guys check to us. We have an easy bet. Um, small blind makes a small race. I could be already drawing that, so I'm just gonna give up here. Mm, bet folding in this spot is totally standard, I would say. Table 2, again, I'm free betting double seated kings versus a mid stacker. Uh, I think it's completely standard. I want to play him heads up, not allow other people in the pot as well. Um, if he 4 bets, I'm gonna assume he has aces and fold. Uh, on this flop, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make uh, a decent side C bet. Uh, obviously, if he raises, I'm gonna fold. But he folds, which usually happens on ace high boards. Uh, after you free bet, everyone assumes you have aces and they're really careful about fighting back. Um, table 2, I'm just gonna fold. 
it's a limp pot. We're not gonna win much money even if, if we hit our nut flasher. So, and most importantly, we were out of position. Open table one. I'm also gonna play table two for sure. Probably gonna free bet it. Um, aggressive free bet or free bets on table one. I could call here, but the guy seems really aggressive. Mm -hmm. And my hand really doesn't play well enough in a free bet pot to warrant that. So I'm just gonna fault without any specific reads on my opponent. Um, seven, five, six deuce. I mean, a bad hand, but when under the gun min opens, he's just begging me to free bet him, and that's what I'm gonna do. Get the hand heads up with him and see him check fold the flop. Um, I don't mind. I mean, I would mind if he checks fo check folds here. <laughs> Obviously, I flopped really good. Um, I still don't want to make the bet too small because there are a lot of straight draws um, that have good equity versus me, so I want to charge him. On table 2, a very strong hand. Um, easy free bet without any thought whatsoever. Um, we flop an open ender on the flop and top pair on a straight board. Unfortunately though, one villain pots. Um, we just don't have the equity we need here, I don't think. Problem is he could have something like ace-king, queen-jack that has us destroyed. Um, and we only have an open-ender and a backdoor flash draw with our top pair, obviously, but... We just don't have the equity here versus a pot bet. If it was, were check around, I would check behind this flop and see a turn, but here there's nothing I can do, but I have to fold. It sucks when you have to fold such a strong hand, but sometimes there's nothing you can do. Um, table 1 is queen 10 9 single suited. Um, standard free bet. Um, I'm not gonna make too big of a c-bet on this board. Um, my small bet doesn't have to work often for it to be profitable. Here it doesn't work, villain pot raises, and we just fold. I'm just gonna fold table 2. I'm not gonna try to do anything with my blocker versus unknowns. Um, very easy bad fault on table 1. Um, table 2. Um, I'm just gonna call my weak aces. Maybe the fish decides to do something weird here. Um, we got a nice flop. Table one. I'm I'm just finishing here when this happens. Um, wow, he didn't bet that. Interesting. Table two. Um, I don't know if I can get any value here. I'm gonna make a small bet. They just fold. Um. Not many good hands that can pay me off there for sure, but I could check. Hopefully, hope someone steps, but I think betting is fine as well. Opening the aces on table two, obviously. Table one's a fault, so is table two. Um, I will open this hand on the cutoff if it's folded to me. Mm, button seems quite tight, even though it's only 20 hands, but... He calls us now, which isn't the best result. <coughs> Still, our hand is okay. Uh, I'm gonna make a bet here, obviously. Mm, table 2, I'm gonna defend. Uh, villain bets. I'm gonna raise him here. I don't need to make it too big. Four dollars is fine. If he re raises, I'm just folding. I'm raising table one with my seated ace on the bottom. As I said, folding on table two. Um. 
now calling. Uh, I miss the fact this guy was so short. If I saw it, I would definitely have free batted it. But alas, I missed it and I have to check here and probably fold if someone bets. Mm, table 1. Easy fold, even though we have top pair and the SPR is 6, but we have almost zero potential for future streets, so it's standard fold. Um, table 2, I'm gonna bet now for value. And I'm gonna jam river here. Hope, hoping he folds some weak two pair hand. He might have, he might even have something like kings and queens that fold, so. I'm turning my hand to a bluff here, for sure. Mm, table 1. I'm gonna call my 10s here. And I'm gonna raise this board after he see bets. Um, I won't raise him now that he pots it. Um, usually when people pot it, they have it, so I'm just gonna give up. So I think it's always a good idea to have a plan ready, but uh, if something like that happens, then you always have to be able to change your plan. plan. Um, table 2 button opens. And now I'm again gonna make a raise. Uh, a bit more than 3x, I think it's fine. Uh, I have a 4. He calls. Uh, queen hits. Um, I'm gonna fire again. Wrap. Uh, wrap a wrap, <laughs> so to speak. Um, you know, if you check raise the flop, you have to be able to fire the turn. Sure, he has some ace tens, but not that many. Uh, he would re raise most sets on the flop, I think. I don't think people really have the patience to call uh, at these stakes. Uh, he calls the turn. The river's a queen. And I don't think there's anything I can do now. I'm not gonna bet it. Um, he usually has a boat here. So I'm just gonna check and fold if he bets. Um, he had a weak straight on the turn. Um, he made quite a loose call of the flop race. Uh, I really hate it on his part. Um, I mean, not only do I hate it, uh, I think it's terrible. If you can see, he had a really bad starting hand. Um, a hand that is just destroyed versus my value check raising range. But alas, he called and he caught me red handed and won the pot. A good adjustment versus such an opponent is obviously to start only value betting strong hands. Uh, fish check calls the flop. I'm not gonna barrel the turn when the board is so wet. Uh, I just don't see any value in it. Uh, he checks the river, um, and I'm just gonna check behind. Sometimes I would step there, but on ace height boards, fishes often have an ace. Um, they love to play aces, so they often have it. Let's see if we can hit a few more interesting spots. Fold on table 1 and the fold on table 2. Those low pocket pairs are some of the worst Omaha hands, so I'm just folding them outright. Folding table 1. Um, turn I'm gonna raise. The reason is that um, this guy can't have a strong limiting range, but the most important reason is that if like an ace hits on the flop, I can wrap aces, which is something I can't do if I only um, call. Um, I'm gonna call his dong bet here. Obviously I have an open ender. He pots the turn again. Um, I don't think he's ever bluffing here, and 
Even though I could bluff on some spades, I think he too often has a spade himself, so I'm just gonna fold. I'm gonna f fold on table one. I could open it, but I think folding's better. Fold table two. Fold on both tables now as well. Not much happening right now. So just keep folding. Um, I'm gonna open table 2. Button seems like I need. He makes a free bet. Um, I think I can call here, even though I'm not thrilled about it, but I think a call is fine. I have enough playability in a freeway pot. Obviously nothing I can do here, so I'm just gonna fold. Um, table 2 again is a clear fold. Um, table one, I'm just gonna free bet this crappy hand versus this guy. People just don't play well in free bet pots, so I'm kind of using that to my advantage. Uh, I flop well enough here to go bet broke for sure. Um, you know, top pair, some backdoor straight potentials, and a weak flash draw. Definitely good enough to stack off. Fold table 2 and fold on table 1, obviously. Um, table 2 is also going to be a fold, probably. Same goes for table 1. Uh, a decent hand on table 2. Definitely opening the city days. Uh, even though it's minimum position. Table 1, I think I can open by blind seam tight enough. I get free bet and the call, and we have a crappy hand, so we just fold. Table 2, I'm opening the button, uh, the cutoff, obviously. Um, table 1, I'm just gonna give up on this board, just not much good can happen for me. Um, table 2, I'm gonna bet. Table 1, it's a fault. Decent handle, table 1 again. That's gonna be opened from the cutoff. Uh, I get 3 bet from the button. Um, I could 4 bet him here, I mean, it's 50 hands. Um, but he does seem to 3 bet quite a lot. Um, it's close, but yeah, I'm gonna forbet him, see what, how he reacts. He calls, we completely miss the flop, which is terrible for us, and we just have to check fold here. Um, it's just hard to think of any hand that folds here, um, if it's in his shoes. Um, turn, I'm gonna bet, bet fold, uh, half a pot, even less. Um, if he didn't stab the flop, I don't think he has anything here. And I'm gonna join the river. A kind of a creative line, but I think the way he played it, he never has anything good there. Um, so, I think... Everything worked out okay. Um, table 2, 
I'm gonna mix it up and check here with my wiki flash. I want to see what these two guys do be before me. Uh, we have a bat and a call. Um, I think I have to call as well, at least one street. Mm -hmm. It's possible one was stabbing and the other has a set, but if this guy bats here again, then I'm just folding. Yeah, he does bet again. I only have a jack high flash, which is usually beat when this happens, so I'm gonna give up. Folding the flop wouldn't be terrible, um, for sure. But some some people just stab the monotone boards for some reason, like they're crazy. And I just wanted to see if that was the case there. Um, fold table 2, definitely gonna play table 1. So I'm gonna play the video for about 5 more minutes. Um, really hoping we hit something good before we have to finish. Not in these hands for sure. Table two. Um, there are two fishes, but our hand is just bad. Again, I'm raising on t table two. I'm sorry, I meant table one before. I don't know why I always mix them up. Uh, villain checks. I'm just stabbing, you know. When people check in Omaha, they usually don't have it. It's a quite of a reliable tell when they are the preflop aggressor, so I tend to use it as much as I can. Table one, mm, easy open on the button. We missed the flop. Two way, I'm not barreling this board. Um, it's just like the biggest action board in Omaha, so definitely not doing anything there. Easy open of the city days, same goes for table two. Mm. Table two, two we flop the nut glass shot and the nut flash draw. Obviously a decent flop for us. Um, table one, I'm gonna call the race. On this board, unfortunately, I have to check fold though. Villain checks behind on this flop. So I'm gonna assume he doesn't have anything good. And I'm gonna bet big on the turn and on the river. Um, I don't think he can ever check behind this flop with any real equity. Uh, he might call my turn bet, but I'm almost sure he will fold the river to a big bet. Um, he just gives, he just folds on the turn. So obviously he doesn't bet his air in a free bet pot, uh, which I think is a huge mistake. When when you are not fortunate enough to hit a piece of the flop in a free bet pot, you should bet. Because that's the only way you can win the pot. And not check behind your air. You can check behind your medium strength hand, but don't check behind your air. So um, I'm gonna sit out on the next big blinds. And I'm gonna play until then. Um, table one, I'm gonna squeeze this hand versus a fish and a regular caller. Table 2, I think the call was standard. 8 hands on the guy, but our hand, while it isn't the best squeezing hand, it does play well enough in a squeeze pot. Uh, we flop, flop middle pair and an open ender, or a wrap. We can be dominated sometimes, but it's a free bad pot, so we have to get the money in. Uh, he check shoves. Um, he has top pair and the flash draw gets there unfortunately and scoops up the pot but in a free bet pot like that I think our play is standard uh, we still had around 40% a bit more maybe yeah we had 41% versus his hand so it's not like a terrible result for us but 
Mm, I think tracking behind would be a bit too weak when we actually hit something this strong versus an unknown. If he was a tight player, I would probably check behind because I would know that his board hits that range too much. But here we just didn't have the luck to flop something while he doesn't have the flash draw. Um, table 1, easy stack off versus the button. Um, I'm gonna fall to a raise by the other guy though. Um, button calls, the other guy raises, so I'm just gonna fold. And we sit out on both tables. So, not the best session. Um, I probably lost a few buy-ins, but I think we hit some interesting spots. Um, got into some good... Got to see some good bluff opportunities. And hopefully you guys learned something by watching this video. Uh, like always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section, you know, even if you have any criticism or whatever, just let me know and I'll try to improve for next time. So, yeah, I hope you learned something in these 300 hands. And until next time, this was Shkudlivets for PokerStrategy.com. Bye, guys.